Hey everybody, Grad School here, and welcome to Ladder Up, sort of. As you can see, you are watching a replay, but I am commentating, commentating, commenting, commentating. Whatever the word is, I'm doing it live over this. Does that count? I don't care if it doesn't. I'm going to do it anyway. So, this was a warm-up game yesterday that I played uh, to get ready for the series. And I came across a strategy from my opponent that... I couldn't just let go unseen. And it really also fueled this desire to change the direction of this from just me doing a ladder series where I plow through the ladder and say some words over it and that's it. Uh, I'm not an expert, so this isn't a guide, but uh, I spent last year in the top 10 diamond as Protoss for quite a while. Um, I started from the bottom up. And I really want to show people who are in bronze, silver, and gold league that it is possible and it's not as hard as it sounds or feels like when you get started off. You know, there's a lot of anxiety with the ladder play. Uh, and I'm just going to go through and show people that it's, it's doable. And so I'm going to mix some of these in here. If I come across a game that I see, that I play rather, uh, that I think is a really good teaching Tool, I'm gonna use it uh, so this game was against Zerg and we all know that I've got a lot of issues with Zerg uh, and quite frankly this guy was a lot better than me and I don't want to say it came down to luck but it really was kind of lucky but there are a few things that I did in here that that you can take with you when uh, when you sh when you see play like this so I started off uh, a standard nine pylon and sent my scouting probe down to the bottom left. Uh, sometimes I'll send it cross map down here, but on these big ones, I want to find them as soon as I can. And this is one of the quickest routes. I mean, obviously we got the cross base, but it's the same distance. So I did see his uh, drone there. So I knew he was down here. And as Zerg, I was expecting some pretty standard play um, in early hatchery, maybe even two. So, uh, I wasn't that concerned with getting a lot of data from my scout. So, I'm back at the base doing my standard opening with a gateway, then I'm coming with a pi or a, a cybernetics core to wall off my ramp. Well, when I came back down with the scout, and I'm going to go ahead and just go to my view here. And I'm counting his drones right here. And there are a lot more drones than you would expect. Yes, there's the two... Uh, gas it's not an exploit but they it's where the, the Zerg build two extractors on their geysers and then they destroy them and they get the two drones back while I'm not even going to try to explain it. it they get two more drones than they should for their su supply gap so at this point I'm a little confused and, and I brought my pro back down there to check the natural for an expansion as you'll see here I didn't see it, and I'm watching this in the mini-map. It's another thing that you can take away from this. You don't always have to follow your scouts around. You can you can check it out in the mini-map and, and still macro on your base. So at this point, he doesn't have a base in his natural. He doesn't have any gas, and this, this is what floored me. I could not think of one good reason why he would send all of those drones to deny my scouting. So at this point, I knew something was up. And again... He's just starting his natural. This is way past the point when he should already have it. So I'm a little confused. And I'm not sure really what's going on. Because I've never seen a Zerg do this. So now I'm starting to throw down some extra gateways. And I was just going to do a standard three gate into maybe a Robo. Or even Stargate depending on how I was feeling at the time. Uh, so you can see my second assimilator is up. But I'm not getting anything out of it quite yet. Again, Chrono Boost and Gateway. Which is standard play. And this is when I see him in the natural of my base. And that's when I kind of hit the uh-oh button. And I'm going to take it off my camera view here. <laughs> and there, what is this voodoo? That's exactly what it was to me. Voodoo, I've never seen this. Completely confused me. So then I started thinking, well, what can I expect to see from this right here? And immediately I'm thinking spine crawlers, which you see he just threw down and a lot of harassment with queens and more spine crawlers 
It's basically a Zerg equivalent to a cannon rush from Protoss. And there, I mentioned it right there. You probably shouldn't be typing when you're getting cheesed because you really need every second. Now this is a mistake on both of our parts. I sent those two zealots down. His mistake is following. Now he could have just run right up my ramp and started causing all kind of damage in my mineral lines. Instead, he decided to chase for a minute while these two units get some damage done. In the meantime, I had already thrown down another gateway. Sorry, it's really dry in here. My throat's starting to give already. So I got the Zealot here to hold the ramp. He's on hold position, which is really important. You don't want any Zerglings to run by. And this this first 15 minutes is crucial. I'd say the first 9 to 10 minutes is crucial. So you can't let anybody run past you here. And while I'm trying to catch up on unit count, here he is building his Zerglings. And he's going to start laying creep. And what he wants to do is get this creep to crawl all the way up into my main. So he can, of course, hop his spine crawlers all the way up. Now this was another mistake by him. And really winning a match sometimes comes down to exploiting your opponent's mistakes more than they exploit yours. Everybody's going to make mistakes. It's fine. But you need to take every chance you can get. And so here I am. And I'm going to warp in another wave of zealots here. And away I go. I see I'm in range of the drones. I want to keep his mining to a minimum. I know he's got a natural base, so he's already on three bases technically to my one. So I know I need to move quick, otherwise he's just going to outproduce me in every way. So here's the move, which was good timing. The Zelts are going to clean up those Zerglings. And I want to get those spine crawlers killed as quickly as possible. This is key. If you don't stop those spine crawlers, you will lose. And it was it was a pretty swift cleanup after this. Uh, these queens are no match for this force here. They're going to clean up the natural. Meanwhile, he's scrambling. He's behind. He doesn't have anything back home. He's got his natural down here with little to nothing. He's behind in resources lost. Uh, he's lost 1,600 to my 875, and I know my face cam's covering up a lot of this stuff, which is why I left most of it off. But I will not get rid of the face cam. I won't do it. Well, some games I will. So here he is scrambling to catch up. I knew I had to move in. He wasn't going to have much to stop me. And if I were to sit back on my base and let this go, he would have droned right back up, and he's still ahead of me by a base. So you have to be decisive. If you come ahead in a battle, you need to push. And here I, I, I don't, prematurely, but I didn't know what he had in the main. So I force fielded his ramp so he couldn't get anything down in the event he, well, he tried to get the queen down. But say he had roaches or another large batch of zerglings, I didn't want them to come down here and stop this force from destroying his natural. So it's really important that you take at least one sentry to uh, to wall off their ramps. It stops the reinforcements, it gives you the advantage, and allows you to clean them up. So at this point, there's nothing he could do. And he actually has some Zerglings building down here as a last ditch effort to destroy what I had. Uh, but while all that was going on, I was already transitioning into Dark Templar. This was before the push even began. You have to think two steps ahead of what's going on. So even while I was destroying this, I realized that I needed to tech up in the event that he had something else waiting that I didn't know about. I don't want any surprises and I wanted to finish it. So here he goes into my mineral line. At this point there's no sense in running all these probes away. So they're just going to go ahead and attack. Dark Templars are coming in to clean those up. I did lose a lot of probes but at this point it didn't matter. It doesn't matter if he runs through with all of those. Because he's got his hatchery, a spawning pool, and two extractors left. Now, I'm going to back it up just a second here. Show you again why why these sentries are so stinking important. I'll increase it just a bit. Here it is. He tried to run away with his drones. If he gets away, he's got enough minerals for at least one hatchery. If he gets a hatchery up and I can't find it, draws out the game another 10 minutes. 
So here's a force field, stops all those drones from running by. And they get cleaned up quickly. That's game right there. He's got nothing left. This, no problem. So there it is. Uh, you're going to see a lot of cheese in ladder play. Uh, a game before this, I got cheesed by Protoss. I got Dark Templar rushed. Didn't see it coming. Killed me. So you just be cognizant of what's going on. If you feel like something's wrong with your scout, always assume that they've got something crazy going on. Five times out of ten in bronze, silver, and gold, they're probably just bad and there's not any tricky play going on. However, that one time and you get cannon rushed and you're not paying attention, it's going to hurt. So this, this initial scout and counting how many drones he has and knowing that he should have at least a spawning pool going up, maybe an extractor, and certainly a natural. They should have a natural going at about 15 supply for Zerg if they're doing a fast expand. So with nothing going on there, I mean, it was just the red flags were all over the place. Now, you probably won't see this from too many people. I've never seen this before. I've played thousands of games. Uh, never seen it. And if what he says here is true, a GM, Grandmaster player, lost to this build. Uh, I'm not sure I buy that. <laughs> but whatever. I'll, I'll take his word for it for now. So, anyway, scouting is important. Keep on it. I know sometimes I... Uh, I lapse myself, but it, it will stop a lot of cheese. Cheese is relatively easy to, to beat if you can see it coming. And my sweet little pup here, come here. You say hi to everybody. <laughs> say hi, everybody. Say hi, everybody. This is Khan. He's my killer. My Khan. Just me and him tonight. Yeah, hi, buddy. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to jump back into a ladder game and record it live. So I hope you take something out of this. Scouting is important. Don't forget it, or you will die to stupid cheese like a hatchery rush with spine crawlers and zerglings. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you can appreciate the new direction this is going. And if you don't, say something in the comments. If you like it, boom, thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.